Hi everyone, welcome back to another First Friday Fives here at Go Big Bore or Go Home. I'm sorry we missed January, so this one is actually coming on a Thursday. I'm just making up for some lost time because for 2017, we're going to have one on the first Friday of every month, and I want you guys to hold me to that. Now, a little while back, we did a list of the top five big bore cartridges that were best known for their recoil. This was a list that when someone mentioned the cartridge, the next thing they mentioned was the recoil. And in reading a few comments, some folks were surprised by the inclusion of the 10 millimeter. One poster even stated, well, the 357 Magnum has more recoil. Now I agree, but for some reason I know guys who shoot the 357 Magnum all the time but complain about the 10 millimeters recoil. Go figure. But that brings us to a list that I was really getting the vibe that people wanted to see. So for this list, we're going to talk about the top five big bore calibers with the biggest recoil. We're talking calibers that took recoil to a whole new level. So let's set out some criteria. First, these calibers can be mainstream calibers or wildcats, so it's a fair game for the rare and obscure. Secondly, this has to be a cartridge that is established and shootable today. So anything that cannot be had via production or custom shop, nor any ammo that cannot be bought or loaded, is out of the running. It also means that if it's so rare and obscure that something like only one or two people possess it, no dice. Thirdly, metallic cartridges only, so no black powder. And the fourth and final rule, no rifle cartridges allowed. That would be a whole list on its own. Plus, this is about cartridges that were designed to be used in a handgun. And with that, let's get started. Number five, the 454 Casul. Okay, you know if this is where the list starts, the recoil we're discussing is going to get really nasty. Designed by Dick Asul in 1957 and debuting in Guns and Ammo in 1959, this cartridge really was the first of its kind, creating a genre of Magnum Plus style cartridges. It was the ultimate culmination of what someone could do when they pushed the 45 Colt to its absolute limits. Lengthening the brass to 1.383 inches, thickening the chamber walls, and beefing up the case head by using small rifle primers, this cartridge achieved maximum pressures of 65,000 PSI. That's a record still held today as even the big Smith & Wesson cartridges of the X-Frame max out around 62,500. And all that pressure means recoil. And that's recoil that will introduce your face to the top of a revolver frame if you're not careful. After decades of work, the culmination of Dick Asul's hard work and efforts came together when Freedom Arms opened for business and released their Model 83 revolver chambered in his mighty cartridge in 1983. The cartridge was a wildcat no more. And naturally, a cartridge that scoffs at Inspector Callahan's former most powerful handgun in the world created some intrigue. This cartridge could perform, too, taking the largest game in North America, and it was capable of taking African game, too. But the recoil is always there to remind you that this much power comes at a price. The massive amount of powder, along with big heavyweight bullets up to 395 grains, can create huge grip-to-palm kick that will get your attention, and the incredible pressure will shoot the muzzle skywards faster than your eye can track. It's like a big palm punch with a whipping effect. Some big bore enthusiasts don't care for it due to the pressure, and some just feel they'd rather use a larger caliber. But with practice, it is manageable and can be controlled to produce very accurate shooting. Seriously, there is a reason that this brute is a favorite of mine. But as much of a beast as the 454 Casul is, the four cartridges ahead of it make it look like a regular old house cap. Number four, the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. This cartridge is the answer to the question of what a 454 Casul on steroids would look like. Designed to be the handgun cartridge with the fastest velocity in the world, Smith & Wesson created this behemoth by taking advantage of their X-Frame's exceedingly long cylinder. It was introduced in 2005 with the intention of it being a handgun hunting round with increased range. Handgun hunters have in fact made good use of it and it has achieved the goal of the highest velocity handgun cartridge by being able to produce a 200 grain bullet that can go 2,300 feet per second. The brass case is 1.8 inches long, the longest handgun cartridge out there, and it has a maximum pressure of 62,500 PSI, which is just nipping at the 454 Casul's heels. And with all that extra space, not only can you add extra powder, but have your bullets. Whereas many consider a 350 grain bullet to be the top end of bullet weight for the 454 Casul, the 460 Smith & Wesson has the room to comfortably seat 
395 grain and 400 grain bullets and still propel them at just unheard of velocities. To make sure the revolver gets proper spin to stabilize the bullet, the Smith & Wesson XVR, which stands for Extreme Velocity Revolver, has graduated rifling. This means it starts at one twist rate near the cylinder and ends at the muzzle with a faster twist rate. And what follows with more powder, higher velocities, and heavier bullets? Well, recoil. What else? This cartridge will move that pistol with more force than a 454 Casul. No question about it. It's reported to be not too bad when not loaded to the limit. But then, what did you buy the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum for? At its max loaded capacity, this cartridge will absolutely blow a raspberry at the 454 Casul, And your hand might hurt quite a bit, too. Number 3. The 475 Maximum. The what? Huh? No, you heard right. The 475 Maximum, aka the 475 Line Ball Maximum, aka the 475 Line Ball Long, is exactly what it sounds like it is. Unlike the 475 Line Ball, though, the 475 Maximum is still a Wildcat, and it's only available through getting a custom shop to make you a revolver, and also by cutting and reforming your own brass. While the 475 line ball has a brass case of 1.4 inches, the 475 maximum has a case length of 1.61 inches. Hence the name, as this is the case length of the first maximum, the 357 maximum. And that has something to do with this. Basically, John Linebaugh had gotten his hands on some Ruger SRM 357 maximum frames and must have thought, gee, how much farther could I push my cartridges on this thing? Well, here's your answer. With more case space, the 475 Maximum can pack more powder and or more bullet weight. On average, you can expect an additional, say, 150 feet per second over the 475 line ball. And in regards to wrist wrenching, you can believe that the 475 Maximum will deliver. Maximum pressure is 50,000 PSI, which will deliver quite the snap at the muzzle. And you will get a big, sharp punch to your palm. Not to mention that the Ruger Maximum frames typically aren't all that heavy. I was speaking with a gentleman at my local range who was considering getting one. That is, until he shot one. This is not uncommon for many as the benefits don't outweigh the increased recoil that the cartridge produces. But that hasn't stopped many from getting one of these custom built for hunting or fun or if masochism is your thing. But as hard as this horse kicks, it's only strong enough for the number three spot. So let's move on. Number two the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Ladies and gentlemen, the current most powerful handgun in the world champion, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. And it is the big bruiser it was designed to be. This really is just about the reasonable limit of what you can do with a handgun. With bullet weights from 275 grains all the way up to a whopping 700 grains, and high velocities that pretty much shame most handgun cartridges, this behemoth will destroy most things, most game, or anything that you pointed at. And that's not hyperbole. This bad boy can take the biggest game out there. Grizzly bear, polar bear, bison, water buffalo, elephant. King Kong ain't got sh** on you if you're packing one of these. Developed specifically to reclaim the 44 Magnum's relinquished title from the 454 Casul, this cartridge hit the market in 2003. And it was a hit. A lot of people liked the novelty, the raw power, the hunting capability, and the ability to download it to more manageable levels for more comfortable shooting. This cartridge has become the legend it was always meant to be. And the recoil is also a legend. In his book, Big Boar Revolvers, Max Prasak said he thinks of it like a big 454 Casul. Does that scare anyone else? Sure doesn't sound comfortable. The folks at Smith & Wesson knew that mitigating recoil would be a must for anyone shooting this cartridge and, as such, designed the new X-Frame to be big and heavy, weighing in at up to 84 ounces. That will help absorb a ton of recoil. And they also added an excellent muzzle brake, which is extremely effective, and outfitted it with a thick hoe grip, which the guys at the range I rented one from took the courtesy to replace with a significantly thinner grip. Thanks a lot, fellas. When loaded to its maximum of 62,500 PSI of pressure with a big heavy bullet, this monster will beat you up pretty darn good. It can really shorten your range trip in a hurry. But the question is, 
Why is it only number two? How is it not the number one pick here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because, spoiler alert, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum was designed to outperform the number one entry on this list. And while it succeeded in performance, thankfully, it didn't outdo the number one entry in recoil. Number one. Drum roll, please. The 500 Maximum. Remember how the 475 Maximum was made to be a longer, more powerful version of the 475 line ball? This cartridge is what happens when you use a Ruger Maximum frame to lengthen the 500 line ball case from 1.4 inches to 1.61 inches. The results are literally painfully clear. Also known as the 500 line ball Maximum or the 500 line ball Long, this cartridge was intended for the biggest of game that walks the earth, effectively able to take all the game I mentioned in the number two entry. Like the 475 line ball, you can go for extra velocity or heavier bullets. And while the cartridge has had runs of brass made by Hornady, it's a wild catch cartridge that has to be made these days. You can do it the old fashioned way by using 348 Winchester brass, expanding the neck to accept a 50 caliber bullet, or use 50 Alaskan brass from Starline and cut it down to the 1.61 inch length. You will find a maximum frame Ruger or a Dan Wesson maximum makes a great donor when you can locate one, but then you need to send it to a custom shop in order to get this gun made. And if you want the limit of packable handgun power, this is it. Often it gets loaded with a 525 grain bullet and can go as high as 600 grains effectively. While it's true that the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum can go as high as 700 grains, those bullets have been known from time to time to tumble and become inaccurate. The 500 Smith & Wesson is most comfortable when it tops out at 440 grains, 500 grains, really maximum. And while the standard 500 line ball can go to the 525 grain bullet, it just can't match the velocity of the 500 maximum. And we're talking a velocity of 1,350 feet per second being very common with a 525 grain bullet in this cartridge. That's a Taylor knockout factor of 51.7. It will ruin the day of any game it's pointed at. But what makes it the number one here on this list is that it will also ruin the day of anyone shooting it with the recoil that it produces. Remember how I said it's the limit of packable handgun power? Well, that's because the 500 Smith & Wesson, despite being more powerful, is also notoriously heavy. As one custom shop owner referred to it, it's like carrying a boat anchor. The 500 Maximum doesn't suffer from this excess weight, but that means it doesn't benefit from it either. Coming in between 48 to 56 ounces, the 500 Maximum is essentially a five-shot Ruger Super Blackhawk on a slightly extended frame. So it weighs a good one to two and a half pounds less than the X-Frame. It has no muzzle brake, and the grips are usually wood or micarta on a Ruger Bisley grip frame. This makes the guns significantly more packable, and also significantly more brutal in the recoil department. While it has a lower maximum pressure of 50,000 PSI and is often not loaded that hot, it will still be a slightly less painful experience to shoot this revolver than to be shot by it. Think I'm exaggerating? Well, in the description I've included a link to John Tafen's review of this cartridge. For those not in the know, John Tafen is a well-known and well-regarded author and a big boar hunter and enthusiast. He can handle himself when it comes to recoil. He states in his review he would shoot a maximum of 40 rounds of this cartridge, usually in the mornings, so he could take the rest of the afternoon to recuperate. He actually says the recoil made him physically ill. That might not sound surprising coming from the guy with the YouTube channel, like me, but from John Tafen? If he says it's a leviathan, I know he speaks the truth. For being the handgun cartridge that claims victory over the shooter as well as the game, the 500 Maximum is the hardest recoiling big bore cartridge you can put your hands on. So let's run down the list before we go. Number 5, the 454 Casul, the original nightmare for grizzly bears. Number 4, the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum, aka the handgun equivalent of X-Men's Quicksilver. Number 3, the 475 Maximum, the biggest brute under a 50 caliber. Number 2, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, for when you find yourself being stalked by a T-Rex. And number 1, the 500 Maximum, for the truly masochistic shooter. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed the list. Do you agree? Did we miss one? 
Maybe you think we should have had it in a different order. Tell us below in the comments. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video as it really helps us out. Subscribe for more ways to punish your own wrist, and remember, go Big Boar or go home.